In 1798, the zoologists of the British Museum in London met to examine the skin of an extraordinary animal which had been sent to them from New South Wales by a colonist called Dawson. That animal was completely different from anything they had ever seen before. Its fur was like that of an otter, it had webbed feet like a duck, a flat tail like a beaver, and in place of a mouth, a duck's bill. Those experts declared Dawson's animal to be an elaborate hoax, but in reality, it was just one example of an entirely different wildlife. Millions of years of isolation had made it possible for a process of parallel evolution to take place in Australia. Ancient groups of mammals who had tried their luck in the fight for survival had almost entirely disappeared from the other continents. While alone on this enormous island in the southern hemisphere, they were able to diversify far away from their better equipped competitors. Australia separated from the rest of the world and became a gigantic Noah's Ark where those original inhabitants of Gondwana, the supercontinent which contained all the lands of the southern hemisphere, were able to prosper. Here life evolved along different lines, and the continent of Australia became home to unique zoological species. The fish experimented with lungs, the birds grew to almost two meters, the trees became fire resistant, and the mammals laid eggs. The story of the inhabitants of this Terra Australis can be traced back to the distant days when all the continents of the Southern Hemisphere were one. Dense rainforests covered the edges of the supercontinent Gondwana. The world was then a warmer and more humid place in which enormous dinosaurs ruled over a zoology and permanent evolution. But alongside the enormous prehistoric dragons, Protected within the jungles, lived other smaller and more recent creatures, waiting for the climatic changes which would prove to be an insuperable obstacle for the powerful lizards. The remains of that universal jungle can still be seen in the northeast of Australia and are now home to the descendants of the long extinct dinosaurs. The birds are the most numerous species in this green, suffocatingly humid world. Their ability to fly meant that they were not condemned to isolation like the land creatures of Australia, and competition with the species from the rest of the world produced new types of bird, which then came to these Jurassic forests and stayed forever. Here there were no large predators and food was plentiful, so many species of birds became part of the history of this independent evolution giving rise to extraordinary creatures. The cassowary is one of the heirs to the gigantic birds which inhabited the jungles of Gondwana. Those common ancestors evolved into the ostriches in Africa, the rares in South America, and the emus and cassowaries in Oceania. The common cassowary measures almost two meters and weighs around 60 kilos. A giant in terms of present-day birds, but a mere lightweight when compared to its close relative, the moas. Both moas and cassowaries were descended from a common ancestor, and the moas inhabited New Zealand until the arrival of the Maoris in 1350. They measured almost 4 meters and weighed 250 kilos. 
But even they had a bigger brother, the elephant bird, weighing 500 kilos. Yet another of the children of Gondwana, when the supercontinent split apart, it survived only in Madagascar and eventually died out. Despite its appearance, the cassowary is a relatively recent bird. It is believed that it only separated from its primitive ancestor around 10,000 years ago. On the other hand, other more normal looking birds are among the oldest inhabitants of these Australian jungles, the mound builders, a group of birds which were the first to become separated from the main branch of ornithological evolution. The Australian brush turkey is the most representative example of the Australian mound builders. The males build nests which can be up to a meter high by collecting together up to four tons of vegetable material. Tiny fungi live among the dead leaves, decomposing them and releasing heat as they breathe. In this way, the nest becomes a gigantic incubator. In it, a number of females lay their eggs and the male will look after them, making sure that the temperature of the nest remains constant. It is believed that somewhere on their tongues or beaks, the brush turkeys must have areas which are extremely sensitive to heat. And so, during incubation, they plunge their heads down into the leaves and check that the temperature remains between 30 and 35 degrees centigrade. The system, which we might think is a recent original innovation, is in fact the demonstration accepted by many scientists as proof of just how closely the mound builders are in evolutionary terms to the reptiles. For only reptiles and the group of brush turkeys use this particular and effective system of incubation. Although there is enormous variety of birds in Australia, the outstanding examples of wildlife evolution in this continent belong to an entirely different branch of the animal kingdom. In those distant forests 100 million years ago, there lived different types of mammals who sought to ensure their survival by using different means of reproduction. The monotremes, the oldest of all, were mammals but laid eggs. The Eutherians gave birth to completely developed young, and the marsupials, somewhere between these two extremes, completed their development outside the mother's body. Competition was extremely tough. The Eutherian mammals were victorious in almost all the corners of the earth. But when Australia became an independent island around 50 million years ago, none of these new mammals with placentas had yet colonized its lands. And Terra Australis, became the kingdom of the marsupials. Night in the southern hemisphere is full of ghosts from the past. When darkness falls, shadows come to life in the ancient forests of northeast Australia. The yellow-bellied gliders move silently around the trunks of the dense forest in search of sap and resin. When the dinosaurs prowled around the jungles of Gondwana, their cycle of activity took place during the daytime, determined by the sun, which activated their gigantic circulatory systems. At that time, the mammals were nocturnal creatures who, whenever possible, avoided encounters with the enormous lizards. The habits of those first marsupials can still be observed in many of the species of present-day Australia, and the nights are alive with furtive movements. The possums, along with the kangaroos, are considered the most evolved of the marsupials, but despite this, they remain faithful to the nocturnal traditions of their origins. 
Millions of years in the dark of the jungle has equipped them with excellent climbing skills and the ability to see and hear in the humid shadows of their environment. Like the gliders, the possums, such as this bush-tailed variety, lick the sap which oozes from a broken branch or a damaged tree trunk. Climbing is for them synonymous with survival. There are now no large predators in Australia, but the possums are small animals and this makes them vulnerable to the carnivorous marsupials. For the European scientists, basing their studies on the original zoological classifications, it was clear that the marsupials were inferior to the mammals that inhabited the old continent of Europe. So much so that they named the mammals of this European group eutherians, which in Greek means perfect mammals. For these zoologists, the eutherian mammals had displaced their competitors because they were able to keep their young inside their bodies until they were completely formed, whereas the young of the marsupials complete their development in the pouch used for this purpose. But if the first zoological classification had been carried out in Sydney instead of in the ancient Athens, the conclusions might well have been very different.